This video is the first in the series for the Roland FA06 and 08 workstations available from pseudosonic.com. So if you're watching this as a demo video on YouTube or something like that, realize that you can purchase the entire lesson set on disk or download from pseudosonic.com. If you look around our YouTube channel, there may be one additional video that shows uh, an example of a more in-depth lesson that's in the entire set. This first lesson is just an introductory into the FA-06 and 08. We'll cover about some of its functionality and also talk a little bit about how it fits into the market as far as its price point and capabilities. It's recently released in spring of 2014 and it's not quite Roland's flagship workstation. Their workstation is still the Phantom G which costs you know over a thousand dollars more the Phantom G has a couple other functionalities. First of all, the build of it has more metal, the case is more rigid, it's heavier, has an internal hard drive, things like that. But the FA06 does have a lot of features and a lot of bang for the buck. Um, Roland's not really known for introducing, introducing uh, keyboards that have color LCDs at this price point. And I think that just the technology and the availability of bringing something like this to market made it a perfect time for this keyboard to be released. So let's talk about some of the capabilities of the FA06. Of course, starting with the back panel here, you have the ability to read XD or SDXC cards, which is the extended capacity cards. And I believe you can get those up to 256 gig. Most people would probably be fine with a 32 or 64 gig card. You can buy those for around uh, 20 to 50 dollars online. So with that, you know, 50 gig or a 64 gig card, rather, you could record several hours of uh, songs and waves and sounds and things like that. So you'd be good to go. You also have a USB connection in the back. You can connect to a computer. You can write off or store sounds, exchange uh, files. You can upload uh, samples to the computer. You can also interface via MIDI of a DAW workstation uh, software like Cubase or Pro Tools if you wanted to. And then also with some of these softwares, you can use the FA06 as an integrated audio recorder. So you could plug in a guitar and record that sound into your uh, software via USB. You don't normally see that functionality on a lot of workstations. Uh, it's It's been around with some controllers for a while. It's cool to have that in the FA06. You also have a button here called DAW Control, and it allows you to quickly map to your different DAW software, like Cubase, Pro Tools, etc. And it has these maps built in, so all the knobs will work. Um, you know, the transport controls will work and things like that when you're working with the sequencer. So it... It's another cool functionality. A lot of manufacturers don't think ahead to have that automatically, and you may have to map those up individually or download something or do something in your software. Um, the FA06 has it automatically with just a one button press. A um, couple things on the front here you have a sound modify section with a row of knobs. You may have seen these on keyboards before. Allows you to select different rows of information, and then you can also uh, edit whatever parameters on this row such as sound modification, EQ adjustments, user assignable functions and also effects assigns functions so you can change those. Roland likes to fit in the DB controller as well. You can modify sounds and assign the DB controller to change parameters on almost anything in the keyboard. You could control uh, LFOs, you can control pitch parameters, you can assign it to effects and things like that and integrate it into your performance some way. Some cool things about the FA06 as well is how quickly you can uh, set up splits and layers or duels as they call it. With one button press you can go into a split and, you, and then you can simply just change which sounds you're splitting for the upper and lower portion of the keyboard. Um, then also you have dual function so it's similar to it's basically a layer where you have two sounds mixed over top of one another 
quickly change those. And then staying in the same mode, it's interesting. You know, you're only in studio set. You can actually press both buttons at the same time and go into a 16 timber or 16 part studio set. And from there, the possibilities are endless. You could have two or three layers at one end of the keyboard. You could have 10 or 15 layers at the other end of the keyboard. You can have different effects on each timber. You can have different split points. You can have a different split point for every part of the keyboard if you wanted to. So you could have 16 different split points. So you can really dig down deep in here. Another thing that's kind of interesting too is that you're even when you're recording, you're in so you're using studio sets, so you're not jumping in and out of different modes. It may sound a little uh, odd to be doing that, and as we go into later videos, we'll show you how it kind of makes more sense. Um, it also takes out a couple steps whenever you're setting up a sequence. You may be starting to work on a song and kind of playing around with the sounds, and you want to go ahead and record something in sequence mode. You just simply press the record button. You don't have to go into sequence mode and then copy over that studio set that you're playing previously into a track in the sequencer and then copy the effects over into the sequencer as well and map those to track one and do all the things, all the hoops that you had to jump through with some of the older keyboards. In the FO6, you don't have to do that. Let's talk about the middle control portion here. Again, you got a high resolution LCD screen so you can fit more things on the screen. It gives you more information so it's easier to use. You don't have to uh, click on as many buttons to get to submenus and see what you're working on. So you have the bank parameters, you have sometimes the keyboard split parameters, level adjustments, things like that, all at a finger's press away. And sometimes there's even, if you press the shift button, there's some dual functionality with these category buttons that pop up so you can quickly jump to other control areas or other screens of the keyboard if you need to. Now as far as jumping to other screens of course there's a menu button. Most keyboards or workstations with this power are going to have menu buttons so you have to go to submenus at some point to adjust other parameters that you just can't fit on the screen. So here for example is a mixer interface where you can adjust the levels and also send levels to the effects parameter. So for something like that, yeah, you have to ju dump in, jump into the submenu buttons. So those are available as well. And then you have a favorites functionality which allows you to program certain sounds that you're commonly going to use into different banks and I'll show you how to do that as well. Another cool thing is you have something called a preview button. So anytime that you're dialing through any of these sounds, if you press the preview button, you can get a playback or a performance or a pattern rather for that sound. It kind of gives you an idea of how it could be used. Then you also over here in the next section, in the ARP rhythm section, of course the FAO 608 has ARP and a built-in arpeggiator and you can assign that to play different parts or different timbers or tracks or whatever. You can also change the pattern of that arpeggio and some of these patterns are pretty realistic. Um, there's some in there that sound like guitar strums which would be impossible to play on a keyboard but you have those in there that you can use to actually record with. So you can you know press one key and it'll play the strum and it will record the notes into your sequencer and you could edit those and change the pitch of them and things like that if you wanted to. You could uh, set up samples to be played and things like that even if it's a real-time performance. You also have a tempo adjust here. It's pretty obvious. It does have the tap feature. That's pretty cool because you can tap quarter note beats and it'll approximate what that tempo is based on how quickly you tap the button. Um, then you also have sequencer transport controls. It's pretty obvious. You have the ability to navigate through the measures. And then you also have stop, play, and record. Almost every sequencer has these functionalities. What's cool about the FAO6, again, is that you can jump into sequence or into a recording without jumping to a different mode. 
Another cool thing is, is that this sequencer allows you to export uh, song files that can be edited on the FAO 6. You know, you could be saving a sequence that you've worked on all day and, and power up the next day and start back at the same point, editing the sounds, editing the notes, things of that nature. But you can also export your sequence as well. So you could export it as a stereo wave or you can export the individual tracks as waves as well. And that's cool because you can drag those tracks into a DAW software like Pro Tools and you could do more editing, more arranging. You could um, master it if you wanted to take it to a studio and have someone else master it, things like that. That's cool functionality. You don't really see that in a lot of other workstations to export the individual waves for each track. Lastly, we're going to talk about the sampler similar to the SP404, I believe, Roland's handheld or tabletop sampler that they have. It has 16 pads that can trigger different sounds. You can use these samples as well to be triggered into a song. So even though you don't have a audio track recorder, you can trigger a wave to play as the sequence is playing. So you can record in vocals or guitar performances if you wanted to use it that way. Of course, you can internally sample anything on the keyboard. You can sample anything that you plug into the back. You can sample an entire sequence and apply effects to it and things like that. You can cut up the samples, re-trigger those. You can save different sample banks. So you don't just have 16 samples. You can jump to different banks. And also, this sample pad has other functionality. So you can change the pad utility and use these to trigger other things. You can even trigger external devices such as uh, video performance editors and things like that that work with stage performances if you want to do that. Um, and then you can use these as numerical inputs to dial in sounds if you wanted to. So this just gives you a brief overview of the functionality of the FAO 6 and 08. And in later videos we'll dig down and show you how to do some sound editing, sequencing, and sampling with the FAO 6 and 08.